I think my first drawings were much more emotional, much more personal. It might not be something I didn't draw to please others in the beginning, um, necessarily something would and anyone would want to decorate your room with. You'd have to maybe have a pretty dark aesthetic to put up my first pieces. Hey listeners, this is Whitney Rosenson, owner of Art Dimensions. Happy Hump Day and welcome back to Beyond the Palette. I'm super stoked to be interviewing Christina Hale today, a fantastic artist and also an old friend of mine. Christina and I actually went to the same grammar school here in Los Angeles and we even grew up on the same street. So needless to say, we have known each other for a long time and have been working together for years. I love having Christina on the Art Dimensions artist roster, and her drawings and paintings are so good. Hi there, Christina. Hi, Whitney. Welcome to Beyond the Palette. Thank you. This is so exciting. Thank you. How are you? Thank you so much for spending time with me today from Lake Tahoe. It's fun. Absolutely. I'm doing well. And um, yeah, I okay. haven't done any interviews, but I'll give it a go. Oh, we're so, I'm so happy to have you here. And thank you for welcoming all of us into your creative world. All right, let's dive in. What are you up to these days in your studio? Right now, I have I feel like it's caregiving um, during COVID and everything. I haven't been. The first um, push during COVID, I did the tarot deck, the crown deck tarot, which I was hired to do by a friend um, that I went to Marlboro High School with. And she introduced me the, to the tarot. And luckily the tarot is a set based on a regular card deck. And the first tarot decks were designed in the 1500s and it was a game that they played like bridge. And um, so there's a form uh, already that you can embellish, you know, or put your own creative ideas too, which makes it something that a lot of artists love to do. So a lot of artists seem to be redoing tarot decks. How many cards in the deck? 78. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it was, um, it, we kind of did it in between our work schedules and Katie would send me notes and then I would think about what I wanted to do and what had to be done. So we, um, I built a lot of characters around her ideas and my own as well. But so the first, um, this was in what, 2020, we started and finished the whole project probably in 2022. So, but currently in my studio, I've been, I've been making a lot of things for the shop I work in, honestly, and designing things for, for your Etsy site. Yeah. Yes. My Etsy site X brick mortar X for lack of a better idea. But so where can people see the tarot cards? The tarot cards are crown deck tarot.com. And you can see all 78 drawings. Very cool. And tarot is spelled T A R O T. Right? Yes. yes. Okay. Awesome. All yeah. right. What are your favorite materials to work with and why? I mean, I know you're an illustrator and you're also a painter. So mm -hmm. you work with a lot of different materials. What are your favorites? Well, I feel like, I mean, you know, Shingo, we grew up with Shingo, who's an amazing artist. His father's an amazing artist. And I started in painting at San Francisco Art Institute in abstract art. And I love oil paint and I loved stretching my own canvases in the rack room. And I think... I have, because I've moved quite a bit to be in nature or different places, surfing and whatnot, um, I, in my old age, want to be an abstract painter. <laughs> but because I've moved so much, I tend to have a small kit. And I had beginning drawing with Sam Chikalian, who was from the Art Institute. He's passed away, but he was just this amazing teacher. And... I feel like uh, I really lacked fundamentals. So I, in this tarot project, really had to get back to what is drawing, what is illustrating, how do you create um, an illusion um, with just pencil and watercolor. So it's an acrylic, actually, it's not a watercolor. So 
Would you say pencil and acrylic are your favorite materials to work with or oil or all three? I would say if I had to pick a favorite material, I really love oil and canvas and color fields. I just, I love Rothko. I love Shingo, but I mean, the challenge of drawing is very, I mean, draftsmanship. And my brother is an architect in Seattle. He has a firm called Shed. And so he was always building models and I really do enjoy drafting, trying to, you know, recreate a motorcycle or things with parts or scale. I want to just mention to everyone before we get, we dive too deep or deeper, they can check out your drawings at your website, which is crease.com. And that is spelled C-R-I-I-E-Z.com. You can also see a lot of Christina's pieces at artdimensionsonline.com. So I just wanted to mention that. All right. Did you always want to be a painter and illustrator or did you always want to be an artist? I think it was Jackson Pollock. Yeah, I started just, I figured, wow, I'm going to throw some paint. And um, that's what I started doing in Oakland in a garage. And um, I went to the Art Institute to study film because I'd taken film at UC Berkeley with Les Blank, um, documentary film, and they had no hands-on program. So I don't know if I'd consider myself a multimedia artist, but I have made little films. Most of the videos I've made were eight millimeter. And so it was really film that took me to the Art Institute. And then they had an amazing painting program. And some amazing artists at in 1992 people like twist barry mcgee and um, alicia mccarthy who's still teaching there colin chillag uh cal zecca was an old friend of my father's who's an amazing painter um and i ended up in the painting department okay so painting maybe wasn't your very first goal i mean your goal was creating films it was in the beginning i thought i was going to be a filmmaker i did but you know when you i think what happened is is film is very you need you need capital so pencil and paper i thought well let's start with the most basic right very good very i'm glad you did yeah <laughs> let's talk about some of your drawings i just want to mention you can see these again at crease.com c r i i e z you do you do like these sketches of motorcycles and objects and I mean tell us like some of the subject matter of your drawings because I think they're they're still lifes would you would you call them still light like still life drawings yeah I think for me because I've always been working and kind of moving and in you know lack of stability would apply I would just try to keep focusing uh, on something. So I had a motorcycle for a while. I would draw it. The drum set. The drum set. And I think I think my first drawings were much more emotional, much more personal. It might not be something I didn't draw to please others in the beginning, um, necessarily something would and anyone would want to decorate your room with. You'd have to maybe have a pretty dark aesthetic to put up my first pieces, but I think I'm more connected to those because they weren't works for hire. They were, I was trying to understand something about myself or about the figure. I guess I started with the figure. I think they probably dealt with objectification and different things. And, and then as I got into works for hire, you kind of appreciate the, what you learn doing works for hire. Um, which are definitely can sharpen your technical skills. I mean, you do those typewriters, like you've got a whole typewriter series uh -huh. Uh -huh. and those are old fashioned typewriters like the Remington and the Corona and right. And those are so cool. I love, um, I studied poetry. I mean, I studied poetry with Ishmael Reed at UC Berkeley and um, I really love words and writing and I, I have not dedicated enough time to, but I have contributed to lyrics. Um, I did a song with Gene Troutman, who used to play with Queens of the Stone Age and Michael Berrigan, who's an amazing guitarist. And he used to be in a band called Plexi. Um, so I contributed um, lyrics to a track that you can find on Spotify. Um, it's called Two Bads. And so writing has always been something I did best on a typewriter. 
and I really, I love old typewriters. And if I could have, you know, a thousand, I would. I'm going to post some of the images of the typewriters on your page on the Art Dimension site so people can see those. All right, let's talk about a little bit for like emerging artists that are out there listening to this. Do you have any advice for them? I would say just really you have such huge um, access to information. I grew up without the internet and even negotiating New York City without an iPhone. I can't imagine doing it, but just find um, like seminal text, um, writings and, and colors. And one of my favorite books is Joseph Alpers, which is called Interaction of Color. Joseph Boys, I, I mean, I love Matthew Barney and his, his just visceral sculptures and um, just find amazing artists that you love and, and be inspired. But yeah, it's, um, it's, you know, the re get a real job thing is something that's always going to be haunting you. <laughs> but a lot, of, a lot of people have mentioned that on the podcast. Well, go ahead. You, you've explained that. Yeah. Um, certainly in my family, it was not a path that was um, acceptable. So I had a lot of discussions, hard discussions, um, we can call it that. But um, there's always a way. And and the kids in New York, I taught school in, in, in Harlem and Brooklyn um, when I was in New York. And those kids, it's, again, fundamentals. Um, they had, they were taught advertising skills, marketing skills, business skills, and that's an essential um, part of your life. And if you can get that in early and learn about that, you will figure out how to support yourself with your work. That's great advice. So it's not, so you need to be well-versed in marketing and sales and. It's a competitive, as you know, industry. Right. And, um, so there's more to than just creating your art, if you can handle the other stuff. Too. Yes. And intellectual property rights. And one thing I gained, I mean, I understood when I was in Los Angeles, I mean, you really do have to, these people who've succeeded have teams of people who, who negotiate these realities with them. And um, without that, with it, you are in a much better place. Yeah. I mean, being a, well, you've got more manpower behind you, right? Which is always helpful. Yeah. But I think if you're a sole proprietor, or let's just say an artist who's working independently, you can still do so much with a website and working with consultants and trying to get into galleries and, and and use social media it is a free tool yes and, and don't be shy we have so many tools now it's awesome we, i'm we glad you mentioned that yeah 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 oh that's great advice okay how do you stay motivated to keep creating I think um, a part of my laziness is that I will work for hire and that I will work for other people um, because I get excited about it. And in my early days, I was able to muster, I'm working for myself and have more time. And then I guess as you get older, you have a partner, you have a job, you have things that distract you from that. So athletics has been a good thing for me I've never you know I've, I've always been pretty straight as far as maybe straight edge even that keeps me focused mm -hmm. and um, and you do run it you run right I run yeah I run and walk and uh, I surfed for a long time so anything outdoors always kind of clears my head and did yoga so just creating that place for yourself and that time for yourself becomes the real challenge and um, one day I will have a studio I can just make as messy as I want or I mean I envy people like Matthew Barney who have you know 10 people helping him create his his sculptures and and this massive foundries and you know resources but he also has the ideas he has the concept so anyways you do too a studio <laughs> is I try a studio is important so you don't have a studio now but you have your home. I, I, yeah, I have, I have a little studio in, in my home and um, that's enough to illustrate in and, and make some big drawings in. Cool. Yeah. How long does it take you to create, let's say one of these typewriter drawings? How long would it take you to, to complete one? 
what I've found is that I, it, it becomes a process of layering and a lot with pencil. Um, I mean, just black and white, you can, you can create a sky or um, there's a lot of effects you can do. It's a lot of eraser, but time, God, I, I know that the tarot project, oh God, what were my hours? I mean, if I had three open days, I could knock it out, but I find I, I sketch it out, try to get the proportions correct, or at least uh, uh, to satisfy me. But you are constantly asking yourself questions, how, you know, figuring out, does that look right or whatever, you know, there's all the judgments that you make. And certainly when you get into perspective or drawing a street, you know, you've, you're making adjustments. And with the tarot, I used a ruler and a protractor quite a bit. You know, you start with tools that help you. I love that you said that you make adjustments. You know, I think a lot of people don't realize how much time and energy good illustration takes. And, you know, three days to knock out a, a drawing of a awesome typewriter with all the keys and all the shading and all the effects is really remarkable. So, you know, I, I mean, I think your illustrations are amazing. I love the one that's called... Um, coffee clutch that's uh -huh. on my website too so yeah. for anyone out there who likes coffee and who likes dogs i highly suggest you check out coffee clutch give me just tell me describe your aesthetic and work in three in many words well i guess i i really loved punk music i loved what raymond pettibon was doing with words and allowing himself words in his in his drawing space and he really is amazing, his ironies and things he puts in his work. Um, but I studied cartooning at the School of Visual Art in New York and just a few classes, and that gave me basic proportions. So I guess I would have to lean towards underground cartooning. It certainly isn't normal subject matter for women, but I loved people like S. Clay Wilson. I actually knew him in San Francisco. and. Um, I, I went to, you know, I've seen The Dead, I've seen many concerts, so a good music poster um, has always been something, you know, I've admired, and... Um, so besides Pettibone, yeah. okay, who are some of your greatest influences? Oh, well, I, I have to say, you know, my primary teacher is a man named, um, oh gosh, now I can't even remember, I went to actually sit in a peyote ceremony with was Jim Harithis, who's a curator, amazing curator and um Irv Tepper who was a sculpture sculptor at SFAI so he turned me on to a lot of amazing art in New York I love Rothko I mean I, I love him and um I love Matthew Barney but I'm I'm not doing the work he does by any means how does Barney spell his last name is it B-A-R-N-E-Y yes he was he was the partner of Bjork for a long time um and he, he, he did the um, Cree Master series and so, and a lot of music, I am inspired by a lot of musicians, but. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Did, are your influences different now than they were when you first started your career? You know, I keep finding new inspiration here and there, but I guess at uh, Berkeley, I love George Kuchar, who was a teacher at the San Francisco Art Institute who did spontaneous films he would just have his students come in and it was all about um it was all about spontaneity and just in the moment and uh so I guess I started making art from that place and then gradually became more educated and I'm definitely a proponent of I mean some people are just you know off the blocks amazing at art I don't know what it is but I think it's certainly a learned discipline discipline yeah. yeah and that is available to all of us and I think that's why we love it is it is like lifelong learning is a big thing um for me so oh beautifully said yeah um okay last question before we wrap up what art do you show in your own home or do you only have your own work displayed um, I, through the years have, I was really, I loved, um, Estevan Oriol's photographs. He's photographed Cypress Hill, who I've seen so many times, I can't count. 
and um, did a lot of LA Chicano. I love Chicano art and um, Chicana art. And um, I worked for a man named Brian Ray Turcott, who also similarly loves, um, you know, the obscene. He loves punk and um, has amazing collections. But I also have a piece by Juan Carlos Alom, who is a Cuban photo um, artist that I knew in New York. And um, a piece by Kevin Evanson, who was my roommate in the mission in San Francisco who is um, very cartoony, acrylic on cardboard, but um, he was a really cool uh, performance artist at San Francisco Art Institute. So yeah, those would, those would be my, my picks. That's what you, your picks. Okay, I love that. <laughs> you, that's what, and you support people that you've, that have inspired you throughout the years, which I love. Oh yeah, I mean, Chaz Bohorquez, you probably know him from the LA scene. He just like legend, um, graffiti writer. I was very inspired by graffiti. I have pieces by SK, who was an Oakland friend of mine, who was an amazing graffiti artist. So it, things like that. Super. All right. I want to wrap up with some just quick off the cuff questions. What's your, these are fun questions. All right. What's your favorite color? <sighs> I had to say blue. Okay. Your favorite season? Spring. Food. French fries. And do you listen to music when you're drawing? I try to, I do. It can be anything from drum and bass to Emmy Lou Harris. I mean, all over. I always I feel like there's good music and bad music. All right. And yours yours taste runs the gamut, which is cool. Dream Country music even too. Oh yeah, hip hop. I, I saw so much hip hop in New York and LA and I love people who can think fast and talk fast and it's inspiring i love drums anything with heavy drums yeah all right christina thank you so much this was so fun it was it was great listeners i highly recommend you check out her site um july 30th robert berman gallery is showing the crown deck tarot so the originals and decks will be for sale i think we're getting a book together so july 30th 2022 come to the robert berman gallery okay so you heard christina july 30th uh her tarot decks are on show at the robert berman gallery which is at bergamot station in santa monica it is um i'll be there gallery gallery a5 he's moved his gallery um so it's a5 okay i'm so glad you mentioned that thank you i hope lots of people in la come those yeah. listening to this podcast, I hope you'll join us. Um, last thing I want to mention is Christina's Instagram handle, which is landline at landline 101. So if you want to follow her on Instagram, that would be awesome too. And and also um, Earth to Christina Copy became the public Instagram. Oh, yeah. All right. This is the first time I'm hearing of this. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in. And to Kreese or Christina and all of you, thank you. Have an awesome week and happy creating.